Having a good set of integration tests can be really valuable for your project, but getting the setup just right can be a little tricky. Let's mash on that. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at integration tests. Yeah, so Simon, this is a, a project that it kind of popped up on my Twitter stream. I hadn't heard of it before and it looked kind of interesting, so I thought I'd take a look. Um, and what it does is it just makes it really easy to, to do integration testing for your ASP.NET Core endpoints. So whatever API you have uh, set up in ASP.NET Core just makes it really easy to test that. Um, so when we're talking integration tests, we're talking about, uh, you know, like you spin up the test server and you actually make HTTP calls or like exercise the, the controller endpoints, get right. the results, as, and it's probably connected to a real database, all these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, so not a unit test where you're just testing you know, the, the methods in a particular class. Right, um, so there is with like other a, things mocked out. Yeah, there's a concept of like a fake server in ASP.NET Core, right? Yeah, and this uses that, I believe. Oh, okay. Uh, which just kind of wraps it in a, in a way that makes it easy to use, easier Excellent. to use even. Yeah. So what I have here is just a really simple, uh, did a file new project and it stubs out that sample weather service here that return, we call the get method, it's going to return five random weather forecasts. And then I created an integration test project here uh, that's just a, your typical X unit uh, test project here. So nothing fancy there and I, it dropped in a, a simple unit test. So what I'm going to do is pull in Alba and then just show how we can use it to test that uh, controller of ours. Do you think so, Alba is short for Albatross? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, the name of the person who made it. I have no idea. I didn't look into it at all. Okay, so I've added Alba. And now over here in my test, getting started with it, with it is pretty easy. So what we're, one of the first things we need is the host builder. So we're actually just going to call from our program.cs, we're just going to call this create host builder. So it's going to create the host in the same way that it would if the application were running. Um, so weather service dot program create host builder. That's expecting a string array. So I'm just gonna pass it a empty string array. And then what we do is we create a system under test that takes in the host builder. So here we're gonna say using our system equals new system under test. That's an object that's part of the Alba. So I'm gonna add the using Alba here. And we take in the host builder. And then in here is where we're going to set up whatever scenario it is that we're testing. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Uh, one of those is that you, and of course these are all async, so um, or there's async methods that we're calling here. So this can't just be a, a void test. You have to set it up so that it's an async that returns a task. Okay, so we do system.scenario. And here we sit, we tell it what we're going to call. So in this case, I'm going to do a get. There's also things for, I believe, post and all the other methods that you might call. Um, but this is just get, and the URL that I'm calling is weather service, I believe, not weather forecast. And then in here, I can set up certain assertions. So I could say things like s dot should. There's a whole list of things here, but I'm just going to check initially that the status code should be okay. That's pretty quick and easy to do. Yeah, so that's like the, the simplest test that we could run is make sure that it calls that URL and that it uh, it returns okay. So if I returns a status code that we expect, so I should be able to run this. Should it already run? No. Okay. 
Okay, so it ran reasonably quick, 153 milliseconds. It passed. Just to, I, I'm often leery of a unit test or, or an integration test that passes the first time I run it. So, what would happen here if I passed it in some endpoint maybe that didn't exist? I'd expect it to return a 404, hopefully, and then this test should fail. So, I'll rerun this. And in fact, it did fail. And if I click here, I should see expected status code 200, but was 404. Perfect. Okay, so setting that back to what it was supposed to be. Now, that's just testing the status code. It, I actually have a, re, a result here. It's supposed to be returning um, a list of these objects, basically five of those objects. So I'd like to start doing some assertions on the results that I'm expecting. Uh, so what we can do here is there's actually a response that comes back. And then we can start inspecting that response. So on here, there's a response body that we can read as JSON. So here I'm going to say it's an ienumerable weather forecast. So there's my results that I got back from that call. And then here it's just simple you know, the typical assertions that we might do on those results. So one of those might be assert. Um, is there, oh, I always forget how to do the, oh, Sorry, not I empty. Just do it wrong. Like this. Yeah. All right, so assert that that collection isn't empty, uh, or maybe what I want to do is assert that count is five. So I'm expecting five of them. using system.link. Okay, so this should pass all those assertions. There we go. So that's one way that you can write these. Another one is that you might not do this scenario thing, um, which just gives you all these. Uh, so the scenario is nice if it's just text that comes back because you can assert that the result okay. is a certain thing but if you need to get and most of the time it's going to be like some kind of json object the other way that you can call this is instead of doing this scenario here you just say system dot get as json oh that's handy I and like that. that would just be this here get as json and then i would pass it in the url that i'm calling so just lots of nice little shortcuts like this that make it easier to write these types of tests. So this would be var results equals. Uh, but then I have no way of testing the, the response codes and stuff. So it just depends what kind of test you're writing. Uh, but in this case, it even shortens it up a little, which is kind of nice. If it does happen to return a not a 200 result. I'm expecting that this get as JSON would would fail for me. But that's a, a brief intro anyway to, to Alba. I think it's kind of a nice little library that really simplifies writing these integration tests. Yeah, it sure does. Excellent. Yeah, I'm going to stop making use of that, I think. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us on this episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. Remember to like, comment, share, uh, and if necessary, you can write some integration tests to make sure that you're sharing correctly. We'll see everybody next week. Bye.